Welcome everybody. Today we are going to automatize everyday stuff with Python. Normally, Python is used on machine learning, on websites as backend language, on DevOps and other professional settings. But we can also use it to automatize things that we do every day. On our jobs, sometimes we need to perform some operations on Excel or text files that we can easily perform on in seconds by using Python. Today we are going to see an example of this. We are going to automatize the process of grading students in one school. First, we are going to randomly generate files, like this. 100 reports. See, we have a randomly created name and surname, a randomly created date, a randomly picked between 8 and 10 subjects, and its marks. As you can see, each student has between 8 or 10 subjects and randomly marked for each subject. Once we have a few hundreds of students, we are going to see if they can pass or fail this year. This script is going to take every single report, this one, check its marks and rename it accordingly. Then placing the report into a student paste or a student failed folder. Then it's going to zip both folders. Python, check reports and p process. And now every folder that was on the root folder, it's or at the student failed folder or at student paste folder. For example, this has failed no subjects, this only one, but at the student's failed, for example, this has failed one, two, one, two. If they fail two or more subjects, they are placed on the student's failed folder. So we create our reports, then we check them, rename them as space of fail place the report on one folder, and after we are done, we zip both folders. Let's see how this works. First, we are going to tell the script one action. For example, Python, generate reports, and we have two actions, hyphen D to delete reports, and hyphen G to generate reports. How many reports? The value reports. How we are going to pass the action or the number of reports to generate. We are going to pass them on the script. For example, we want to generate g generate 1000 reports. Here we get the first and the second arguments g the first and the second the first being hyphen g and it's going to save it as action. If action hyphen g we are going to search for a second value, for a second argument, sorry, and it's going to store it into value. If not, it's going to throw an, ex an exception, like this, write hyphen D to remove uh, txt files, or hyphen G X to generate X files. So we are going to generate only 10 this time, 10 files. How are they generated? Let's see. Generate report. Here we have the imports and a list of subjects. We have three, six, twelve subjects. Then in this example we are generating ten. So generate reports ten. This num equals ten. Then we have a for loop in range number of reports to generate. And on this case, it's going to generate 0, 1, 2, until 9. Then we are going to generate some variables. The first one, max number characters. This is going to take the number, it's going to parse it into a string, and we're going to take the length. Why are we doing this? Because, for example, if we are going to generate 100 files, we are going to generate 100 files. This is going to pass as text and it's going to count them. So, three. Our reports are going to have up until three numbers. If we are going to create 100 reports, we are going to create 001, 002, 3, until 100. That's why we are getting the max number characters to count 
how many characters we need to to put on at the start of the report. You will see it later. Then, thanks to the package names, we are going to generate a full name. For example, Thomas Nelson. This is thanks to this is created with the names package to generate random names and short names. And we're going to store it into a student name. Then we're going to create the student name of that. Then we're going to create the name of that file for that student. We're going to take the name, on this case, Thomas Nelson, and we're going to take that name and transform it into a lowercase name and replace every empty space for a underscore. Then we're going to create the file name. The file name is the student, the student number. For example, the first is the student number 0 plus 1. And we're going to use Cephil to pad the name. Let me explain to you. For example, for example if we have the number 18, of 1000, we can't name the txt file like this. We need to append. If we have 1000, then the length is four numbers. So we're going to self fill, pad this number with four, max number characters, four. And it's going to append the zeros. If we want, for example, 100, three three characters is going to append one zero. If we want more, this doesn't mean that we are going to append eight zeros. This means that we are going to append this string, whatever it needs to the left, until we reach eight characters. See? Length is going to be eight. I hope everything is clear now. So we are going to take that number, we are going to append the zeros we need until the max number characters, then we're going to underscore and the student name to file. For example, if we have Jerry Royal, we're going to name it Jerry underscore Royal with lowercase and underscore marks. Every file with uh, underscore marks means that we have no processed that file yet. So we have the file name and the student name. Then we need to create the file. To do so, we're going to use with open file name double B or write as F. Then we take the subjects, this. Then we are going to randomly pick between 8 and 10 subjects. Here we have 12. And to pick random subjects, we are going to shuffle them. For example, we are going to create a subject, import random and random shuffle subjects. Every time we shuffle, every time we shuffle, we are going to have a, a different order of the subjects. See? Why we shuffle the subjects? We can use random choices and pick subjects. For example, we want 10. This is going to pick 10 elements of the subject at random. But sometimes, history, drama, history again. But sometimes this is going to pick one element more than once. For example, history, drama, history again, algebra, physics, drama again, drama again, science, biology, history. This doesn't work for us. So we're going to random the subjects, generate a number between 8, 9, or 10. And we are going to take the first 8, 9, or 10 subjects. This way, we will never pick the same subject twice or more. And then we are going to generate a report generation date, this date. And we are going to do it by generating the current date. And we are going to subtract a number of dates between 0 and 7. For example, this is 22.9, this 26.9. 29, 22.9 again. This is going to create a random date on the last week. After we have the subjects and the date, we are going to generate a dictionary of the subjects with the marks. Let me show it to you. 
the dictionary is going to be a dictionary of subjects, the key being the subject, and the value is going to be a number between 4 and 10, with one decimal, as you can see here. Every number is between 4 and 10, and it has one decimal. This, and then we are going to return this as students and marks. Let me print it. Let me print an example for you. Let's generate one. And we have physical education, art, geography, drama, science, history, music, and, bio and biology. Not subject is repeated, and every mark is going to be between 4 and 10. Then we are going to take this subject and marks, this dictionary here, and we are going to generate a text. This is going to be parsed as text on the way we want. Generated marks reports, we have text, and we are going to take every key and value of this, key and value, and we are going to append the key and the value to the text. We are padding the text and manipulating the text as we want. Again, let me print the result text. We are going to generate another one and it's going to generate this text, the same text you can find here, see? Let me recap again, we shuffle the subjects, we generate a number between 8 or 10, we pick between 8 or 10 subjects after we are shuffled them, we create a date on the last week, we generate subjects and marks, and then with that dictionary we create a text, this text. And then we are going to create the TXT report, what we see here. And we are going to do it by generating a text. The text is a student name, and the student name we have created here with the names package, as you can see here, and report generated on report generation date, and as you can see here. And then the dictionary paste it as text, and then student final marks, the text we have we have generated from the dictionary here, a student mark report. This. After we have this, we are going to take this file and write this text. We are going to do this for loop as many times we want. For example, if we want to generate 1,000 reports. We have generated 1,000 reports. Let me remove this. And also, we can delete those reports. If we pass the ifnd, it's going to take that action, ifnd, delete reports. We're going to come here. On delete reports, we are going to take the OS package. We are going to check every file. And if it ends with .txt, is going to remove that file. Let's see how it works. We have a lot of files here and it's going to remove every single one, just like this. Now we can generate the reports we need. But the point of this script was to generate reports that we are going to check if they pass or fail the school year. Let's see that script. On this script, we can pass hyphen p to process reports and hyphen c to remove every txt file, every folder and every zip file. Let's start with processing reports. That's it. Every report is now inside the failed or passed folder. See? How the script checks every file? Well, let's see. First, the imports here we need, and we have a paste report folder and failed reports folder, and a compression type, a zip file. Well, first, we are going to generate the folders, this one. First, we check if paste report exists, os path exists. This is going to check if this folder exists. If it doesn't, it's going to os.make this. It's going to create 
a folder with this name. And again, we are going to check if this folder exists, and if not, it's going to create it. Again, we are going to get every file on this folder, on the root folder, and we are going to have a list with every single file here. We are going to check the name of every file, and if it ends with underscore marks.txt, we are going to check if the student has passed it or not. First, we take the file name and we open that file name to read. The R is for read and the W is for write. Then we are going to read every line from the sixth one to the end. We are going to skip this one to the sixth and we are only going to take this. This is going to be pasted as subject and marks. Every subject and marks here, it's here, okay? And then we are going to calculate the failed subjects, this function. Here we are going to pass this as a list. We are going to create a variable, failed subjects, and we are going to start it with zero. By now the student has failed no subjects. We are going to create a for loop with this and each line is going to be a subject here. We can replace, for example, on the first iteration of this for loop, it's going to have this. On the second one, it's going to check this. Okay? And it's going to split the string with this, and it's going to take the second part, and it's going to strip every space. Let me show it to you. For example, the first subject is going to be this as a string and we are going to take this string, we are going to split it by this. Every time Python finds this, both characters, it's going to split the string. See? And we are going to take one, the second one. In case there is any empty space, we are going to strip or remove empty spaces. And we are going to parse this as float, a number with decimals. Now, this is a number. On this case, this is going to be the grade. This. If this grade is below 5, it's going to add 1 to the file subjects count. It's going to check this one, this one, this one, this one. On this case, it's going to find only one file subject, this. And then it's going to return the number of file subjects, on this case, one. We come here, total file subjects is going to be one. And we're going to perform a check to see to which folder belongs this report. So we're going to pass the report, the name of the file, and the total file subjects. For example, this um, 001 Thomas Nelson Mark TXT. We're going to pass both arguments. We're going to call move to folder, the old file name, and the total file subjects. If total file subjects is two or more, the student has five, and we're going to rename that file. The new file name is going to be the same as the old file name, but we are going to replace hyphen marks with failed, on this case, if the subject has failed. We create a new file name, and we are going to rename the old file name with the new file name, and we are going to place that file on the file reports folder. Else, if the student has failed zero or one subject, we are going to rename that file name, replacing underscore marks with underscore paste txt. Again, we are going to take the old file name, we are going to rename it with the new file name on the pasted reports folder. We are going to repeat this for every file with underscore marks.txt. After moving every file to the folder it belongs, we are going to ship both folders. How we are going to do it with the shutil package? This means, this means 
shell utilities. To do so, we are going to call sh-util make archive method. And we are going to pass the file weapons folder. It's going to compress it as zip. And the name of that zip is going to be file weapons folder again. It's going to generate students file.zip and students paste.zip. In two scripts with less than 100 lines, we have created a program that generates reports with random names in a random date with random subjects and marks, checks if the student has passed a file, renames the file, moves the file to one folder, and then zips both folders. And also we can remove every txt file, every folder, and every zip to clean our folder. Like with this. This is the power of Python. Everybody, even with little programming experience, can create programs like this that simplifies their life. Now imagine that you are a real teacher. Now you can download the student's reports and you can use the second script and you can do your job in seconds. That's why I like Python. That's why we like Python. It is useful, pretty easy to use and fun. Well, this video is done. I hope you have fun with it. And remember to subscribe to the channel to get notified when I upload new videos like this one. Leave a comment with the favorite feature of this script and I will see you on my next video. Thank you.